Alrighty, eighth grade. So we have just finished graphing linear equations. And so now we're going to get into how can we write our own linear equations. And so that's what we're doing today. Um, starting with how can we do that from graphs? So remember that we've been working with slope intercept form that y equals mx plus b. So to write an equation in slope intercept form, I need m and b. So from a graph, I need to find m and b. And so your work, again, for this is what is m and what is b. So the easiest thing to find is the our b, that y-intercept. So in case you forgot, this is our y-intercept. And m is our slope. Right? And so my y-intercept is where I cross the y-axis. Right? So here's the y-axis. This is where my line crosses it. So that is at 1. And then m, I'm going to take that point, and then I'm going to pick a point where it crosses at two whole numbers. So I'm going to keep going down my line, line, oh, there's a point. So things that I look for, it crosses at all four corners, and not like, oh, it could cross there, but that it does indeed cross at those four points. All right, and so even though this arrow looks like, actually this arrow does go right into that corner. So any of these two points would work. So I'm going to go to the right, and I'm going to go up one, two, three. So up three and over one. So my slope is three over one, which is equal to three. So once I have my m and my b, then I just write my equation y equals 3x plus 1. And that's it. There's my y equals mx plus b. So then I do that for the next one. What is m? What is b? Uh, I, like I said, I start with b because that's the easy one. It's one of your points. Um, and so here we're crossing at a positive 4. And then I'm following my line, and this is where we cross at whole number, or if you didn't see it there, maybe you see it down here. You're Either way, you're going to end up getting the same slope. You just may have to simplify if you go from 4 all the way down to the x-intercept here at 2. So I'm going to go with these first one here. So I went down 2 and right 1. So since it's down 2, that's a negative 2. So down 2, right 1 would be a negative 2 for my slope. So from here, I would have that y equals a negative 2x plus 4. All right, so we find our slope. We find our y. Well, actually, I find my y-intercept. I find my slope. And from there, I plug in. So if we were to put them as steps, find b, find m oops plug in to y equals blank x plus b oops plus b plus blank and where this is m and this is b all right so those are our steps that's what we're doing like i said i find b first because it's one of my points that i can use to find my slope and so i kind of do two things at once I'm helping myself towards slope, but I'm also finding my y-intercept. Now, my y-intercept in this case happens right here at or between negative 2 and negative 4, so that would be a negative 3. And then I follow my line, and here's where my next point is. We also could have chosen this one up here or this one over here. All of those are good points that we could choose. Again, we're looking where they cross at whole numbers. So from here, we go up 1 and over 2, so up 1 over 2. So our slope is 1 half, our y-intercept is a negative 3, so our equation is y equals 1 half x minus 3. Why did I change it to minus? Because plus a negative is the same as just minus, and so it just kind of makes it look more simplified. And so that's our first three examples. Again, our steps were find b, find m, and then we just plug into our equation. So here we have another example. The line models the relationship between a temperature in degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. What is the y-intercept of the line? So the y-intercept of the line is where 
where x is 0. So here I can't, you know, it's not giving me a specific on the line, but I do know that we are at 0, 32. And so my y-intercept is 32. And then it's asking what is the slope of the line. Now they gave us two points. I also could go from here, right, um, up. And then I could also maybe see if it crosses at a whole number point somewhere else. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do y minus y for this one. 104 minus 32. So that's y minus y over 40 minus 0. And so 104 minus 32, I'm getting out my handy dandy calculator. 104 minus 32 gives us 72. And 40 minus 0 is 40. And then 72, oops, I didn't clear out my calculators. I can divide both by 4. And I'm going to get 18 over 10, but I can still take 2 out of each of those, which would be 9 fifths. So my slope of the line is 9 fifths. And we're going to write an equation for the line where x is the temperature in degrees Celsius and y is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So y is going to equal... 9 fifths x plus 32. Because this is my slope, this is my m, and this is my b. And so I'm just going to plug them in. Now it says use your equation to find Fahrenheit equivalent for 18 degrees Celsius. So what that means is I'm going to do y equals 9 fifths times 18 plus 32. And so I, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to take 9 times... 9 times 15, oh, 15, 9 times 18, I'm going to then divide by 5, which is a decimal, and then add 32. Now, I didn't take any, um, any rounding of my decimal, I just kept going. And so what we end up with is that 18 degrees Celsius is the same as 64.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So all I did was plug in and then I multiplied. Like I said with the fraction, this is like 18 over 1. So I did 9 times 18 and then divided by 5 and then added the 32. And that's how I figured it out. All right, one last one because it has to do with finding the equation from a graph. Kind of. Um, I'm going to actually pull it from the uh, paragraph, but we can also see it in the graph. And then our next video is just like... If you're just given paragraph forms with no graphs, how can we handle that? So Amy began with $25. Began, that's a y-intercept term. Intercept. Who helps if I could spell. Um, began is a y-intercept term. Y-intercept is, for the most part in real-world situations, a starting point. So Amy began with $25 in her bank account. And spent, that means we're going negative, right? $5 each day. That each is an indication of slope, right? Because that's a rate of change. Rate of change. The line models the amount of money in her bank account. And it wants to know what's the equation of the line. Okay, well, here we are starting at 25, right? And I could go down to this point here. And so I know that my B is 25 and then now I have to be careful in counting this one this is 5 10 so I've got 10 and it's down 10 and I'm going over 2 because each box is 2 here so down 10 over 2 which is equal to negative 5 so I'd end up with y equals a negative 5x plus 25 now I got that from the graph but I also have both of these in the paragraph. There's the 25 that we began with, and then we spent, which we said was negative, $5 each day. So it was all in the paragraph. Read your paragraphs because it'll make this section a little bit easier for a lot of your problems. Okay, 
Uh, when we don't read, we miss things like that. Uh, even though I highlighted and, well, didn't really highlight, but underlined and circled things as we went, um, we were able to easily use the graph. We, that may not always be the case. So, all right, until next time, eighth graders, keep being you.